one castle, one river to Starcross Lovers and the story full of woe. Hello everyone, I'm once again just a couple of miles away from the tranquil waters of the River Wye and I'm right next to the massive red sandstone ruins of Goodrich Castle which exudes an aura of tragic mystery. The mark of history most certainly casts a very long shadow over the majestic soaring walls of Goodrich Castle. Goodrich Castle is one of the best examples of English military architecture and it was called by William Wordsworth the noblest ruin in Herefordshire. The castle stands in an excellent defensive position on the spur of a hill and protected by a wide rock cut ditch. Goodrich Castle was probably built by Godric of Mapstone after the Norman conquest initially as an earth and wooden fortification and it was designed to guard the borderlands from the turbulent Welsh. In the 12th century a castle was replaced by a keep. Enlarged during the successive centuries, Goodrich Castle saw its last action during the Civil War when it became a royalist stronghold and it found itself under constant bombardment of Cromwell troops as they tried to breach through the massive walls by firing 200 pounds cannonballs at a keep from the aptly named mortar Rory Mag, which is still there and is covered today, unfortunately, so I cannot show you. But here's the picture. The reign of Charles I was relatively peaceful and enjoyed economic prosperity. However, by the late 1630s, Charles' regime had become unpopular. He had dissolved parliament and ruled by decree. The civil war saw, saw supporters of the monarchy of Charles I, also known as royalists or cavaliers, against groups opposing the monarchy. In England, parliamentary supporters were known as roundheads, named after the short cropped hair, in contrast to the long hair and wigs associated with the Cavaliers. A royalist garrison was billeted at the Goodrich Castle. The local parliamentarian commander was Colonel John Birch. Remember this name. The attack caused a subsequent sliding of the castle and decline into ruin. At the end of the 18th century, however, Goodrich became a noted picturesque ruin and the subject of many paintings and poems. The castle even provided inspiration for Wordsworth's famous 1798 poem, We Are Seven. Is the Southeast Tower. The castle is said to be haunted at least by three ghosts. One of them is the ghost of an Irish chieftain who was in prison here behind me in the dungeons of the keep in what is called the Belly of the Beast or Macbeth Tower. Follow me, we're going to the dungeons. It's such an interesting place, but we're going in. There's a haze that's reported here, which is said to be the ghost of the chieftain that was in prison here. Now, luckily for me, I don't see any, but let's have a look. Okay, that's me. And that's the light that comes right behind me. I don't see anything strange. 
See? And the shadows that you see are the ones that come in behind me. So I smell smoke. This is the mighty kick. Just go up. Wow, these are really, really narrow. I have a rucksack on my back. Hopefully, I'll be able to climb with that. What the fudge? Holding onto a rope. Whoa! Holy moly! And there's something that's draining my battery. The gimbal has a nine hours life, and I've been here for 40 minutes, and this, the battery is almost gone. Wow, we are. I am at the top of the cape, and it looks amazing. Now, I talked about one of the three ghosts that I said to haunt the castle. The other two ghosts are very well known and they're said to roam the halls around the castle. And that would be the ghost of Alice Birch and her lover, Charles Clifford. Alice was the niece of John Birch, who we met earlier. Charles Clifford was a young royalist soldier suffering the onslaught of the opposing forces. Alice decided that she wanted to be with Charles. Ignoring the situation, she made her way into the castle. The castle was under siege and they attempted to flee. A fierce storm gave them the opportunity to escape. Trying to flee on horseback, they arrived at the muddy banks of the River Wye, which is right there, without realizing that a heavy rain had swollen the waters. They were expecting to meet the ferryman to take them to the other side of the river. The ferryman did not turn up. As they attempted to cross the raging river, the horse lost its footing and they were swept away to their deaths. To this day, it is said that the screams of shock and terror can be heard coming from the river. Others have reported sightings of the bodies drowning in the river or walking along the battlements.
by you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give us the thumb up and I hope I see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye!